on clear your clutter inside and out. We're talking about believing in yourself. Have you stopped pursuing a dream because you didn't think you could do it? Have comments from others made you question whether or not you can achieve something? Are you ready to throw out your doubt and share your gifts with the world? Learn how to kick doubt to the curb as we continue our month focusing on clarity. Do you control your clutter or does your clutter control you? On Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we'll teach you awareness as well as action steps to create change in your life. Come on, let's get started. Today's episode was inspired about my journey in self-publishing. I trust in divine timing. And through this process, I really felt like giving up at times. I was just clearing some email this morning. I was trying to find something. Note, if you have a Mac and you upgrade to, not Sierra, I don't know what it is, Catalina, you can lose programs. Like Apparently my Microsoft bundle was a 32-bit and now they won't take anything under 64. So just a heads up, you just sometimes can't immediately upload. So anyway, it was a three-day journey. I lost some computer programs and was trying to find the receipt for one so I can get the upgraded needed and not have to pay for it. Anyhow, so I'm looking through emails and I realized I had started, I thought it'd been two years. I actually started on the books four years ago. I had found a email, an email from 2015 when I had sent the beginning of the book draft to someone. I was like, holy moly. I can't believe that I started it that long ago. And so I'd obviously been percolating on these books for a while. When I think about it, first, I trust in divine timing. If I'm honest, I think that my hesitation came from putting myself out on a bigger market. Now, I have the books on my website, but Amazon, I mean, I do the podcast, I'm on YouTube. And if people are looking for me, they're going to find me. And again, same with Amazon. But Amazon exposes me to a bigger market. I'm very fortunate that you all who listen and share your comments, you all are awesome. But sometimes people are downright mean. The majority of time, I don't take it personally. But guess what? I'm still human. I'm a human being having a spiritual experience. And if I wouldn't do it to someone else, I would hope that I would get the same consideration. But again, I have no control over everyone. The majority of comments and feedback I receive are really good. And I can't remember if I shared this on the first episode, but for instance, I had someone just attack me on YouTube, just how much, how awful I was and blah, 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 blah. And they did it. I was like, hey, it's organized. One, two, three, four. This is what you should have done. And I responded. and you know, ultimately feel sorry for them because it went completely over their head because I was like, well, please share your podcast or your video and, and show me how it's done. And I said it in a way, or give me an example of a video. And, and they were upset with my mantra, said I didn't pronounce correctly and I should practice it. I, I did. I would listen. Someone got upset when I did the one on uh, the Japanese art. Uh, and I'm not even going to try to, it begins with an I. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it because before I filmed that, I went, you can find Google Sounds, I could hear it again and again and again before I pronounced it. And they just were crappy. And, you know, I'm not a fan of keyboard warriors who do that. And so my whole point with this is, so now getting books on Amazon and other places puts me in front of a bigger crowd, people are going to be anonymous. And I take reviews with a grain of salt. Like I know when I'm looking and deciding whether to purchase things. And my brother told me, I remember years ago, he's in marketing and he said, here's how you can tell a review is fake. And I remember I was asked to review something and I said to him, I said, I'm going to give you four stars. I said, I'd give you five stars, but reading your reviews, it looks like everyone, the only reviews you have are people that you gave the product to because you have to disclose that. Well, you're supposed to, not everyone does that. Anyway, I said, and if I was reading your reviews, I think if I was to add a five star and my critiques were like, I would offer in different colors 
and one other one, but I said, I think it does yourself a disservice. And I get it in your business and trying to get out there and you have to compete with SEO. And if you have a company that has a huge marketing budget, then you can't compete with that when they can spend millions of dollars in Google. I read somewhere recently that Marie Kondo's husband is a marketing genius. I think that he did mark name, you know, hats off to her. I really like her energy and she's helped a lot of people and supported them. So I think that's good. And back to the conclusion again. So I'm a little nervous. Okay. You're putting yourself on Amazon. There are going to be more people out there. And so I think that that was a hesitation. I really know I'm a good writer. I believe in my skills and I also stink at grammar. I also am just, I'm consistent though, guys. I've been bad at grammar since childhood and all the comments were when I, I won one award in college and it was for creative writing and he was awesome. He was an old school professor, but he's like, yeah, you're gram grammatically challenged. So anyway, at least I'm consistent. And one of the things I've committed to is I will read every response on Amazon and respond. But if someone's really critical, especially if it's someone who hasn't purchased the book, because you see that quite often, I'm going to call them out because I don't want other people who would like to write a book and haven't because they're afraid of the criticism. I, I've, I've committed to that because if you have a book or a sculpture or a painting, get out there. There are going to be people that criticize you, but stay the course. This was also inspired because I reached out to an alum. I went to a small women's college. I graduated with less people in college than I did in high school. And if anyone from my school contacts me, I always respond because I just think that one is a courtesy and two, because we're alums. And so anyway, it was kind of disappointing. Even if she would have said, this is the dumbest idea ever, I would have preferred that than radio silence. And that I had to buckle down and say, okay. And then I could have spent a lot more time sending out more, more query letters. And I thought, you know what? I had a potential connection here. I'm willing to try it. But that just encouraged me again. You know what? I'm going to self-publish because that was two years ago when I wrote that. So how do you keep going when you maybe have a long project like this or the dream seems not achievable because maybe someone's planted something in your head? I'll never forget. When I was living in Los Angeles, I first moved there and got a facial done. And the woman was telling me, yeah, I want to be an actress. But when I moved here early on, someone told me I wasn't pretty enough or talented enough. And she believed that. She held on to that. And so she deferred her dream. She quit pursuing acting. And I hope that you never allow someone to do that. And it's hard. It is hard. I was really fortunate. I'm just going to share this, this story with my fathers. I turn and look, I have it framed up here in my office to remind me. When I was living in Los Angeles. I took a screenwriting course and the guy said, this script needs work, but you have real potential and you can work one-on-one -on -one with me. He was a professor at UCLA. The cost is five grand. Okay. So this is 20, 25 years ago. So, eh, you know, inflation, you guys are smarter than me. What? 10,000, maybe even who knows? Big chunk of change. So I shared this with my father. My father had said, this is my savings. I want you to pursue your dream. And I believe in you. And he was willing to write me a check for $5,000. And I am very fortunate to have parents that believed in me because not everyone is. Now we were fortunate that my uncle had a connection with someone who's a writer and was like, nah, just don't do it. And so I didn't. And when I look back and think about things, because that was a, a dream that didn't happen. I really wanted to be a screenwriter. I had some interest. It never happened. And now I can say I'm fulfilling that dream through this writing because I'm choosing to make a difference in the world. I want you to heal. I want you to reawaken your brilliance. I want you to share your gifts with the world. And I'm going to be able to do that and support people much better through these books and doing a screenplay. Now, don't get me wrong. If a star says, hey, you're awesome, write me a screenplay, I would definitely take a shot at that. But I now understand that and why it didn't work out. I needed to leave Los Angeles. I need to be in nature. I needed to come out here and meet Tony. I get, you know, again, with years and years of perspectives, it's just important to stay the course and to, to trust in all of that. And, and my hope is with today's podcast that it will allow you to keep moving forward, that it'll maybe perhaps reignite a passion and understand you've got what it takes. How are you not believing in yourself? How is it showing up in your life? Because it can be in, in different ways. 
And I first want to talk about some of the negative of when you don't believe in, like self-doubt, you think like, okay, it prevents you from doing that sculpture or doing that painting. But over time, self-doubt can lead to anxiety and depression. And of course, we can have physical complications from that. Weight gain, high blood pressure, chronic fatigue, and increased mortality rates. I encourage you, there was a great article, uh, Synthai Pajik did a self-doubt article for Huffington Post and how self-doubt destroys the heart, mind, body, and soul. It's a really good article. Encourage you to check it out. I want you to think about this for a second. How has self-doubt affected you negatively? Has it made you more anxious? Maybe it's made you distrustful of people. I'm afraid if I open myself up, and it just doesn't have to be about producing something. It can be about falling in love. If you have doubts about your ability to find a healthy relationship, if you have your doubts of being a good partner, then you might keep your heart closed. You might have that self-doubt affect you in that way. I know that self-doubt allowed me to drag my heels for a while. It's mixed in with doing things like having a family and maintaining a business. It takes time to write. It takes time to edit. These aren't things that you know can be done in five minutes, but self-doubt was definitely in there. But the longer you have self-doubt, the more it's going to harm you. And, and I really am a firm believer in the body-mind connection. I know that traditional medicine is really acknowledging that more and seeing how those things affect your, the, the body-mind connection. I know here in the area where I live, Duke has a whole integrative medicine department. I think they've been around for, for quite some time. And seeing how that self-doubt can create the anxiousness, can create the anxiety, and how that affects you. If you have something, it's like taking a little microblade, right, every day and wearing at you in some way until it becomes a big issue. So I want you to take the time to examine and think how self-doubt is affecting you on a body, mind, spirit level. Hopefully that will serve not only as motivation, but for you to say, hey, you know what? This is important enough that if it's affecting my health, it's affecting my mind, my spirit, that I need to address it. And again, we're all going to have self-doubt. I had self-doubt. There's moments when I'm like, what am I doing this podcast for? Not as much because I've been doing it for quite some time now, but it's definitely there with the book. Oh my gosh, what if they hate me? What if they think I stink? but don't take four years like I did. Own and discover how are you not believing in yourself and how is it showing up in your life? Why don't you believe in yourself? Uncertainty, right? Again, like we're creatures of habit. Most of us don't like not knowing what's going to happen. I think that's why there's a fear of death in our culture and society because what happens when we die? Now, I personally believe that Everything's energy, so this physical body will crumple, but my spirit will move on. It'll go forward. And I still have some anxiety over dying because what if I'm wrong? What if that's it? They're just boom, done, black, fade away. It can be the same thing when putting your heart out there or taking the step of producing a work of art. You might be wondering, And it just isn't with failure, right? I mean, a lot of times I think we focus on, oh my gosh, what if I fail? And everyone will think I'm a loser and I put myself out there and, you know, all that. But it's also true success. What if I succeed and then maybe my marriage won't make it? Maybe my relationship won't make it. Maybe people will come out of the woodwork and all they want is money from me. And gosh, I don't want to deal with all that, right? So there's uncertainty on both sides of the coin. What will happen? How will my life change? Will I be able to handle that? Is that something I really want? Ask yourself, where are you uncertain? Where is uncertainty causing doubt for you? 
you simply might not believe it's true or possible. And I was taught by a coach to ask myself, what else is possible? You truly, deep down, might not believe it can happen. Like take screenwriting, for example. It's a really competitive market. I had no contacts, which if you went to certain schools or know certain people, that definitely gets you a leg up. Now it's become a little more kind of like Amazon allowing you to self-publish. It's kind of not even the playing field, but it has allowed for people like me who maybe don't know anyone to put their works out there. I know, for instance, with screenwriting, there is, there's some kind of cool thing and they talk about the screenplays that didn't make it that were really awesome that maybe got options and made. And, and here's a little sidebar for you to remember. We have been watching, we just ended season two of Succession. It's on HBO. I highly recommend it. It is about a news person and his family and his lust for power and control and kind of just crazy family dynamics. And, you know, I encourage you to say, wow, my family might have some challenges, but it's not as crazy as this. Anyhow, the guy had written a script and we're like, man, this script is really good. And if I'm remembering the story correctly, it didn't get made. Well, okay, fast forward. Now he's got this incredibly great show on TV. And if you are a writer, definitely check it out because the writing is outstanding. They have these just come sometimes these singers or I just, at the end, the last episode of the season, the, the man is expressing, he, I don't want to even try to remember it, but the gist of it was, I'm trying to figure out if I'm more sad with you or without you. Anyway, it was just such an eloquent sentence. So if you're a writer, encourage to check it out. Okay, so it didn't work out with this guy for the script, and I always got this TV show. So just remember that when you have self-doubt, because maybe his self-doubt was like, man, they're telling me it's a good script. Why can't it get made? I can't. This isn't possible. So check in with yourself about that. Do you really believe it to be possible? Like, I'm also about keeping it real. Am I ever going to be an Olympic basketball player? No, never was in my reality. But I can be a pretty successful writer, author. So just keep it real on that, but know that it can happen. Your dreams can come true. And then we have to work at them. That's another part of the equation. It takes time to edit, guys. And there were, throughout the process, again, I wanted to give up. And I'm also fortunate that I have a great support team. I had Cotty look at the first edit, which I'm telling you, oh my gosh, those of you that look at first drafts, hats off to you. But she believed in me, she believed in it, and just said, yeah, you just needed some massaging and suggestions. So keep it real. If it is something and you have the talents for, examine why don't I believe it's true or possible and figure out how you can get through those obstacles. If I really wanted to be a screenwriter, I would have figured out a way. I really, truly believe that distrust. You don't trust the process. And that to me comes from a place of fear. Can you say, you know what? They're going to pick someone else anyway, so why am I going to bother? But that keeps you in your comfort zone. It keeps you, it prevents you from having to put yourself out there. And you've immediately doubted yourself because I think the bigger issue, it's easier to say, oh, you know, the screenwriting system is rigged. Uh, they would never pick me anyway then to put yourself out there, right? Because then you're not dealing directly with the self-doubt. You're putting it out on someone else, right? It has nothing to do with you. It's the phony process. So where are you distrusting? And again, that goes into not only believing in yourself, but trusting the process. Okay, well, maybe if it didn't work out with the script, then down the road, I got a TV show and it's critically acclaimed and pretty successful. So ended up working out okay. Might not have had that same success with the movie. And again, you know, everything, I think there's timing to consider here. Like you have the great script, but maybe it's 10 years earlier. I was reading about a movie and they said, you know, when it came out, people were just like, eh, but 15 years later, 10 years down the road, they've been like, wow, this was a really good movie. So ask yourself, where are you distrustful? Where are you using that as an excuse, as a defense, and that that's how it's manifesting your self-doubt? Fear, right? We're either coming from love or fear. It's a great book called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. So what are you afraid of? That you'll be mocked? 
I've had people say, your voice stinks. I think maybe more than once. I've had people criticize the podcast. I've had people criticize the YouTube video. I'm trying to think what else people have been critical of. That's no one's job to please everyone. And remember, life is an inside job. But what are you afraid of? And then it manifests as self-doubt. We talked about fear of succeeding or failure a little bit earlier. But what else might be going on with that? Are you afraid you can't handle the pressure? You don't want to be deadline driven? What is it? I know that for a while, you know, I got married later in life. I wish that Tony and I would have met like maybe 20 years earlier, but I know I was always afraid that if I had any success that I couldn't find a relationship where a guy would be okay and could handle any success I have. And Tony's the complete opposite. And he's like, yeah, I hope your book succeeds. <laughs> I will retire early. So he completely supports the process. In all seriousness, there are some people, men and women, it's not just a, a man thing, that just wouldn't want to see their partner succeed. So what are your fears? What is really driving the self-doubt? And again, I think when you really boil it down, you know, I talked about feeling good enough, worthy enough in love. And also it's, we're either coming from fear or love. I fear I'm not good enough. I fear I'm not worthy. I fear I'm not lovable. So take some time. What is it you're afraid of? Your self-doubt might come from a seed that someone else planted. I mentioned earlier in the podcast, the woman who did facials in LA, someone told her as soon as she came there, you'll never make it as an actress. They planted a seed in her head and it bloomed fully. When I was in junior high, I had an art teacher who just was basically, yeah, you're not that good. So you know what? That's one of the things that I'm committed to this year, 2020, putting it out there is to paint more. I got some oil painting. And when I took a class, it's been forever, I'd like to find a local class to take. I'm actually kind of decent. But that seed that that teacher planted in junior high took a hold for 20 years or 15 or whatever it was. So you have to ask yourself, whose voice is that? Is that my belief or is that someone else's that decided to give me that unsolicited feedback? So be really aware of that because I think especially when we're kids, you can be an awesome parent and someone else can plant a seed in your kid. There are things over that you can't always control. And even if you say, you know what, ignore that person, you know, it's, it's kids don't have the tools that we have as adults. So there are lots of things that can get planted to us in childhood. Know this, think about this for your child and if there's a, how you can support them in releasing that and it just makes it take some time. Talking with a friend the other night and, and with her daughter and she said, you know, I have to, she's a teenager, she's going to have to figure something out on her own. I think there was a lot of truth to that. She is a mother, much as she loves her and wants to support her, the child was going to have to make a decision. Do I stay with this or do I release it and move forward? And, you know, sometimes you can't do for someone else, but just be aware of that. And I think that that's really important because fr family friends can say something, relatives can say something. But examine, is that your voice? Because maybe you've held on for years to this self-doubt and it was from someone else. And maybe they're, they didn't pursue their dream. And so they want to make sure you, I'm going to hold you back because I'd be really upset if, if your dream happened. And then this is something you got to check in with. Lack of conviction. Maybe you really don't want to do something. Check in with that. On another podcast, I mentioned a man who became an attorney because that's what his family wanted. Maybe you're in a family of artists and you really want to be an accountant. You just don't, maybe even you're talented, but you're like, you know what? Painting's not my thing. Numbers are my passion. That's what make getting excited is. I see it as a puzzle and want to figure it out. So check in, is it your dream? Is your self-doubt, I don't want to use the word justified because that doesn't feel right, but is your self-doubt really being useful here saying, I just don't have the drive to do it? Is, I mean, you know, think about my, the guy that I knew, spent years 
studying, had a pre-law thing in college, then went to law school, then practiced law and didn't want to do it. That's years of life. So really check in with yourself. Is this my dream? Is this what I want to do? Or am I doing it for someone else? Or am I doing it because someone said, hey, you're good enough. You should do this. Feel stuck, but have no clue what you need to do to move forward? Would you like to feel energized and excited every day? Are you ready to create the life you desire? Julie's Caraccio supports you in finding the answers within and then taking action to make changes happen. Visit reawakenyourbrilliance.com to learn how Julie can support you with life coaching. How to believe in yourself, right? Easier said than done. First, believe it's possible. You know, you hear those stories like Los Angeles. I lived there for a decade. People can come without knowing anyone and just things fall into place. And it can, you can be an Academy Award winning actor or actress or screenwriter or director. Believe it is possible. Believe it with every fiber and soul of your being. And that's a great place to start. I can believe that I'm successful as a self-publisher. Was the, uh, I never read it, The Fifty Shades of Grey. I think she's probably a multimillionaire and they did movies and all that. I haven't read it. I quite frankly heard the writing's really terrible. And what I say to that when people complain, I'm like, okay, first of all, check in. Are you jealous? And what I said is she fulfilled a need. There was something out there that women, I think mainly women read this, were longing for and she fulfilled that need. She did it all on her own. And she, to me, is someone to be admired to say, you know what? She did it, so can I. So begin by believing it's possible. Because if you don't think it's possible, then it's not. Be brave. Create some thick skin. Put yourself out there. You know what? The reality is with social media and how it is today, and that's one, again, one of the reasons I'm, I'm going to try this year to post something positive on Facebook, whether it's a video or one of my little kind of thoughts, because I think it's so needed. I have, have definitely stepped back from it because it's just been frustrating and maddening, but it's also made me sad seeing how vicious and stinky people can be. For me, because again, you open yourself up to criticism and 95% of the time I'm, I'm pretty down with it and can handle it. But 5%, you know, it really hurts. For me, what helped me be brave was my desire to support people and help them clear their clutter outweighs the keyboard warriors. Because yeah, people are going to be like, I'm sure, rate me one star, this sucks. But they're going to be in the minority. The people that supports are going to be overwhelmingly in the majority. And even if it's just one person that I support through the books, that outweighs because that makes a difference. And if that person clears their clutter and shares their gifts and moves forward, then they allow other people to do it. So it's not just, it's this ripple effect, right? Like skipping the stones on the pond. For, for me, that's how it allowed me to be brave. And maybe for you, your inspiration to be brave is to simply inspire others. It is to maybe you believe whatever you do will open someone's heart or mind. You know, there are different ways that you can support yourself in being brave. But what's my motivation here? How can I be brave? And you know what? It's like anything in life because I'm sure there are. I read this guy and I really like him, Harlan Coben. And he writes, I guess I'd call them psychological thrillers. And so I think I've read, I have to double check. I mean, the guy's written like 15 or 17 books. And I think I've read just about every one. And the one that I found, it was in a paperback, kind of beat up at the library. And he was like, look, he had, it was republished. I think he needs to write this introduction, says, you know what, this was my first book out. And, you know, don't criticize it too harshly. And I thought, wow, that's brave. Because, I mean, he's really, I think I've read... I think I've thought, wow, to like 
15 out of 17 books and thought the other two were okay, well, you're batting pretty well with me as far as I'm concerned. I think that's an awesome track record. But how brave of him to do that? And again, he's well known and has got an audience and does movies and books. And to be like, you know what, this was my first work, but I'm still, I'm going to reissue it or put it out there again. To me, that's pretty awesome. So he was brave in that way. Make a list of everything you've achieved and don't leave anything out of that. I want you to think work, home. I have been an awesome pet mom, right? That's an achievement. The cats get their litter boxes cleaned twice a day. They get their vet appointments. They're fed. They actually rule me. Let's just keep it real. I have opened my own business and run it for 10 years. That's a pretty big accomplishment. I have a successful marriage. That's really important to me. I have good relationships with my relatives. Lots of things that I've done. I'm a good person in general. I try to always do right by people. Do I succeed all the time? No. But I've accomplished a lot. To me, it's an accomplishment if you smile at someone and make their day. It's accomplishment to enter a contest even if I don't win. I took that chance and put it out there. So I want you to write all the awesome things that you've done because I know each and every one of you listening or watching have achieved something. And if you're feeling stuck, then ask someone that you love and trust, hey, help me come up with this list. And then I want you to put the list where you can see it. Like for instance, my list would be in my computer. For you, it might be in your bedroom. It might be on your bathroom mirror. But I want you to remind, you know what? I did do this. Push past your discomfort, right? I used to always be a behind the scenes person. And then when I did Reawaken Your Brilliance internet TV show, and I'll never forget, I can still feel how, and I probably had maybe 25 or 30 tune in. And I remember my producer's like, that's really good. He was like, I was expecting zero. And I was like, well, okay. Then that's, you know, 25 or 30 more than we were. So anyway, so nervous. Because even though it was in a studio and I'm just Skyping with the person and I've got the producer next to me, I'm in front of the camera. I was always behind the camera. So I had to push past that discomfort. I used to be terrified, and I'm not exaggerating, of public speaking. I remember having to do my first 30 seconds for my commercial. Laugh, and you see some people who could go on for an hour and be comfortable. I remember taking about saying my name and the name of my business. And then the women encouraged me, keep on going. You can do this. You got this. So I had to push past that discomfort and that false belief that I couldn't speak publicly or I wasn't a good public speaker. That self-doubt, well, that I created that self-doubt, but that wasn't true. It wasn't true. I can put my face out there. I have, and I've been successful doing it. So push past any discomfort because then you might discover the gifts. I would have never done the podcast. If I hadn't have done the TV show, I would have never created books had I not done the podcast. So all these things, all these building blocks are layers that are going to support you in one way or the other. Visualize. Visualize creating that sculpture in your mind. Visualize a happy, successful relationship. Visualize doing that painting. Just take a few minutes every day. I like to, when I wake up, visualize the day going smoothly. If I don't have something I'm really concentrating on, I see getting the work done. I see spending time with the cats. I see if a challenge comes up, fixing the solution easily. Remember, everything's energy, so you're setting the stage. So visualize your self-doubt maybe as a big marshmallow puff man and you taking a sword and saying, be gone, self-doubt, and slash in the big marshmallow muffin man. Visualize you handling the challenges and get in the habit of doing that. I'd like you to try an experiment. Spend a week, 10 days if you can do it, visualizing each morning. Maybe it is destroying your doubt. Maybe it's about how your day goes. Maybe it is about committing to writing 10 minutes every day, whatever it is, choose something to visualize. So I want you to do it for at least a week. And then I want you to do it not for a week. 
and take notes because then we have quote unquote proof. How did your weeks go differently? Did you notice something? Did things go more smoothly? Did you write more? Was life in general just better? And see for yourself the difference that visualizing can make. Be very aware of your thoughts. I know you know this, that we can get on autopilot. We have these subconscious thoughts. Like I couldn't have told you that the art teacher planted that seed and I held on for it for so long. I didn't realize it until I, you know, 20 years later and I had to push through the fear of taking an art class because I was like, well, what if I suck? What if people are like, good Lord, you are the worst person to, and it was an adult ed class. It was in Boston when I was an Annie. What if you are like, you're the worst person to ever try painting in the history of mankind? I had held on to that seed that I wasn't good enough and that had created my doubt. So it was subconscious. I wasn't even aware of it. When you do your inner work, when you do your healing, that allows stuff to come up to be healed. And you say, whoa, that's not true. That wasn't my belief. So be very aware. What are you thinking? And take time out of your day. Just stop. What am I thinking now? I mean, it's crazy the amount of thoughts, the number of thoughts that we have each day. So if you become more aware of that and checking in, and digging and saying like, oh, or when you find yourself doubt creeping up, okay, let's stop. Let's take a couple deep breaths. I like to do something where kind of a guided meditation I find to be really, let's have a dialogue of what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling, what I'm believing. Where is that coming from? So kind of get into a meditative state. What are my thoughts? Then how can I change that? Can I blow it up? I like to put things in a rose and blow them up because a rose is a universal symbol of love. And then it's just energy that dissipates and can go back to doing whatever needs energy somewhere. Surround yourself with positive people. Again, I believe in people that keep it real. My mom, I laughed, I changed on Facebook, changed my little thing and I hadn't gotten the books out. And she's like, I'm so proud of you because I know you've worked so hard. And God love my mother and my uncle. They are my grammar gurus. Who are you surrounding yourself with? You want people that believe in you and support you and tell it to you like it is. Because I think that that's really important. If you have people that are Pollyannish or sycophants, that I think of, you know, I'm a Steelers fan. Antonio Brown, I don't know if he's mentally ill, but he has surrounded himself with people who are feeding his ego and he ultimately all comes down to him. He's making his choices, but I don't believe he surrounded himself with good people who would, could still support him and say, man, I love you, but you need some help. Have you considered talking to someone or, you know what, you've got this great offer. Do you really want to think through this and what you're going to do? So positive people who are also real. Examine who you're hanging out with. Are they supportive of your dreams or not? Act like it's already happened. Visualize walking into a bookstore and seeing your title on the shelf. Visualize holding hands with that romantic interest. Visualize sitting in your dream home. Visualize creating your makeup line. Act as if it's already happened. So when I first started my business, I won a Napa Los Angeles did awards. And I've since, after a couple of years left, Napa wasn't, just wasn't the organization for me. I was disheartened by some things. And I thought, you know what? Let me do my own thing. People are like, there's no way you're going to win. Because I was up against, it was for the Eco Organizing Award. And how they did it is anyone could vote. So, for instance, my parents voted for me. It just didn't have to be within the organizing world. And I'd worked really hard. I'd done a lot of good things. And that year also won a regional award for the Triangle area where I live. And it was a big deal because when you looked at the winners, like they had winners and then I I can't remember, it's like an honorable mention or something. I can actually see the award from here. But it was a big deal. (laughs) When I looked at the other, no one had a business anything like mine. So they obviously had recognized 
as a small business owner and the contribution I was making. Anyway, I would walk around the house and I'd do my Oprah voice. I am the eco-organizing winner. Do that a couple times. And then I wouldn't, you know, I'd forget it, but I did it daily. And I ended up winning. And I remember my father saying to me, he said, wow. He said, I have to admit, I, I just didn't think you'd win because, you know, you weren't in LA anymore and you're not as well known as the other people. But that was part of my routine. I acted like it already happened. So how can you act like it happened? And when that self-doubt comes up, I am the eco-organizing winner. Push it away. Bye-bye. Self-doubt. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. So how can you act like it's happened? Get outside yourself, right? That's when you can become neutral. That's probably an, another or better way to phrase it. Let me look back as if I were talking to a friend, or maybe I'm in the role of therapist and asking questions. What's going on here? How can I examine my self doubt from a non judgmental, a neutral point of view? And let me ask myself qu these questions What do I discover when I do this? Because myself, I've got the ego, right? Because it's really about the ego. Your soul's got it going on. Your soul knows what to do and how to make it happen. But your ego, let's have a conversation. What can I learn from my ego? What is my self doubt really coming from? And I'll just throw this out here. It might be a little too woo woo for some of you, but maybe it's for something related to a past life you know, and that you've carried into this lifetime. I've had enough crazy things to happen that I believe, personally believe in that. No, it might be out there for others. But then if that doesn't ring true to you, how can you become a neutral, non-judgmental party and have a conversation with your ego and find out what's this dot going on around? What do you need, ego? Ah, you need reassurance that everything's going to be okay. You need reassurance that you're still going to have a role play when I'm completely in the zone and in touch with myself. Okay, hey, we can work with that. Hey, ego, you are super useful because you keep me going. You keep me on deadlines. You help me do my to-do list. Of course, you'll still have a role, ego. It's okay. Take actions. Small st steps add up. If you spend 10 minutes daily on something, that's just over 60 hours. You get a lot done in 60 hours. You devote 20 minutes, you're going to have over 120 hours. You can really do a lot with daily action. And again, daily action helps keep you on the path. And so if your self doubt saying, you know what, you're never going to succeed in an artist, and you spend 10 minutes daily taking action in painting or sketching, that's saying to yourself that, uh-uh, look, I'm here doing it. I'm doing the work. And that, again, when you have a conversation or you visualize or whatever, instead of self-doubt being that huge mountain, it's like taking that little microfiber blade and just step by step wearing down that self-doubt. And I'm telling you, even people who you think, oh, they never have doubt, they do. Even those who are, who are super successful, but they've probably spent years doing it. Think about someone like Michael Jordan who was cut from his junior high basketball team. Now, I, I used to watch, I love Larry Bird and Magic Johnson and that rivalry, and M MJ's really the last that I've watched of basketball. But this guy was cut from his junior high team and probably one of the most successful basketball players of all time. Talk about having to overcome doubt. I mean, come on, junior high just stinks, right? Talk about probably your worst years of adolescence. He overcame that to be one of the most successful players of all time. So if you ever think, oh, I can't overcome this doubt, I want you to think of Michael Jordan. Or find someone else that inspires you. Every day, take some type of action. And again, you know, go with the flow. Take breaks as you need it. But maybe if you're like, ah, you know, and I get it. Like the creative process, you know, looking back and like, oh, good gosh, Juji. Sorry, that's what my nieces and nephew call me. That just came out. And say, okay, maybe I need a week or two off of writing, but then I'm going to make up for it. And again, the creative process can be very when you need breaks. And so part of it over the years was taking breaks, obviously. 
but take small actions every single day. Remember, you are good enough, you are worthy enough, and you are loved. And if you think that that's not true, and maybe you're in a really challenging place in life right now, think that's not true, I have no friends, I have no family, I think you're good enough, I think you're worthy enough, and I love you. Please don't forget that. I know at times that we can be in dark spaces, and I think we're in such a divisive time in history right now. Know that that's not true, because I believe in you. I believe you can do that. And if you have to listen to this 5,000 times to really believe you're in your soul and that I'm sincere, do it. And when you remember that, your self-doubt's going to hit the highway. And then finally, share the love. Thank people who have helped you overcome your doubt. In the uh, gratitude of the book that I did, so I thanked, obviously, Tony, the cats, my parents, but there were other people along the way that helped me that I wanted to thank. Book that took more effort to write, I thanked two teachers from junior high who believed in me. I thanked a high school teacher who, because when I went to college, I felt like, I don't know if I was prepared enough. I was prepared to write a paper thanks to my high school teacher. That was one area I definitely had confidence in. And then a college professor, I think. So share the love. Share people who supported you and helped you and believed in you along the way and helped you conquer your self-doubt. And not only through gratitude of thanking those people, but how can you encourage someone else? I had mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, if people criticize me, and again, like I am completely open to constructive criticism, but if it's someone who hasn't purchased the book and said it stinks, I'm going to flat out say, you know, I'm going to address this, especially for those of you that might have a book you want to publish or something you want to share with the world. Don't let people like this get you down because I think that's so important to encourage others. So when you've accomplished what you had doubts about, how can you encourage someone else to do it? Take actions from today's podcast. Determine if self-doubt has a negative impact on your mental, physical, emotional, or spiritual health. Examine why you have self-doubt. List all of your past achievements and place it where you can see it daily. Visualize your goals. Do small steps daily towards your dreams. Be aware of your mindset. Share your dreams with people who support you. Check in to make sure you're really motivated to do what you're doing. Thank those who have helped you slay your self-doubt. Encourage others to believe in themselves. Next month, we're talking about the oneness. Go out, clear your clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. When you clear your clutter, you can share your gifts with the world. Sign up for our free newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. If you've enjoyed Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, please rate, review, and share us.